Story Experiential with Pixar is a really special program for us. It's our first um, experiential offering and we get to partner with Pixar, an amazing company and a place where many of us spent a really marvelous part of our careers. So we wanted our first experiential program to be something really meaningful and really accessible to everyone. And what's more meaningful and more accessible and more human than storytelling. Um, we all tell stories every day. We appreciate stories every day. We use stories to communicate, to share our values, to learn about places and experiences and people. It's a part of your classrooms for sure every day for every subject. Um, and it's a really important skill to bring to the workplace. We share our stories with our colleagues, with our clients, tell them about the work we're doing, the work we want to do, and, and why it's important. Um, and so who could be a better partner for that than Pixar? We're thrilled to be going on this storytelling journey together and with all of you. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to introduce my colleagues, Britt Cruz and Dennis Henderson, who are going to lead this session. And we also have with us Sydney Barnett and Jorge Flores, who are two incredible educators who've been teaching Story Experiential since we started the program. So I'm going to hand it off to you, Dennis. I want to welcome everyone once again. Um, and it's an honor to be here with you. As a fellow educator, I commend you and I know how you know, how much of a workload we all have as educators. And there are oftentimes, especially when something new comes to our table, how am I gonna fit this into my classroom? How am I gonna fit this into my routine? So what we wanna do right now is really turn it over to educators that have been doing this. And this is where Jorge and Sydney, I'm gonna turn it over to those two. They have implemented this already into their classrooms. They're gonna share what they've learned as far as the best ways to implement it. And at this time, I'm just going to turn it over to them so you can learn from those that have been doing this. Sydney? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sydney. I'm in Oakland, California, um, and I teach in Oakland Unified School District. Um, I come from an industry background, so I taught, I worked in film and design for many, many years and um, slowly found my way into education. And so I'm a CTE teacher, which is career technician educator. So I'm really supposed to be teaching um, industry standard skills, bringing in um, project-based learning, work-based learning, industry partners. And I actually found myself, I found out about this program in a, a moment of dire need. I had just started a job um, and there was nothing was going right and none of my computers were working and all the curriculum I wrote wouldn't work. Um, and I found this program and I just like did it full, the full nine weeks. So I was like, this is what we're doing. I did it the second time, um, the second semester, and now I'm doing it again um, because it's just a really phenomenal program. This is a great program that has, that my students have benefited from so much, uh, whether in middle school, uh, high school or college. And so far it's been amazing. And I try to teach it, uh, incorporate it into my uh uh, classroom. So I've taught the program both with um, just paper and pencil. Like that first semester, I was like, we we have sketchbooks and pencils, let's go for it. So we used all like web-based free programs to do all of it, video editing, audio editing, um, drawing. We just took pictures of the drawings and airdropped them to the computers and cropped them. Um, and then the second semester, once I got my footing, um, we did, we um, used uh, Procreate and Krita and Wacom tablets. Um, and then I got to actually teach them Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere. Um, we got a little sound studio going. Um, and so I've kind of taught it all the ways in terms of like a lot of resources and no resources. There's really only two things that you have to do. You have to see the assignment and you have to submit something at the end of the week. And everything else, um, you know, everything is amazing. Like every single thing that's offered is very, very meaningful. But if you have really busy students or a, a bad schedule or lack of resources, or you're working on multiple projects at once, you can really make it your own and, and dive in deep or just say, we're just going to write a script, you know, and we're not going to draw it or we're going to do something different. I do want to go back to Jorge again. And if you can touch on the points in regards to the, the 
the students and how they work together in the collaboration, what you find out of that as a teacher? The program itself uh, is kind of structured so that you can take it as an individual or as a member of a team. So this really worked for us because in our class, we do a lot of uh, 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 collaborative uh, uh, learning. Uh, and so students were placed in groups of four. And so there they could pitch stories, ideas to each other. Uh, then they could pitch it to the entire class and they could get feedback from each other. They can get feedback from the class and then they can get feedback from this program. And so that really, you know, it, 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 you know, thinking about it, I was a little bit nervous uh, when I was teaching it, particularly to middle schoolers. But uh, <laughs> uh, I think the culture is established really early on in the program and it actually becomes a very safe place for folks to share. And because everybody's sharing, uh, they, they end up being very respectful towards each other. And the stories that started coming out were awesome. And then like people really appreciated like the honesty that, that everybody had. And it was wonderful. And at the end of the day, people how, who were really quiet in the teams found their voices. They started like, you know, they realized that their stories have power. And um, they, I was able to see them come out of their shell. Uh, so that structure I kept for the, my high school classes, my college classes. And, you know, kids and adults alike kind of uh, went through a similar um, uh, transformation uh, throughout the course. So I also wanted to uh, turn over to um, my, my colleague, Britt, and what he's going to get into is the mechanics. You'll get an idea of, you know, where and how this could fit in your class. This time I'm going to turn it to the mad scientist, my man, Mr. Britt. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I just want to add to what you've heard already that we tried to make this program a real world experience in every way. And so that means we want the students walking out with artifacts that you know industry would recognize. We think of them as industry recognizable prototypes. So this is work you can be very, very proud of. And to get there, we make students follow the creative process at Pixar. The creative process is getting used to making something, sharing it before it's done, getting feedback and doing that again and again and again, and actually learning to enjoy that process. So the story reel is the output of this program. And it's a basically a rough draft of how they make films at Pixar. And I just want to see here that every week, like uh, Sid said, you have one job, which is to deliver a work in progress that builds towards your final short film. And so on week one, we make it quite easy. You're just coming up with one sentence ideas for a film. Um, but, you know, by week four, you're working on your outline. And every one of these weeks has the exact same pattern. And we tried to make it as flexible as possible, again, to make this work in the real world. Um, this, uh, what I just want to speak to here is the Monday. Monday is that one kind of synchronous moment at 5 p.m. Pacific that, again, a lot of people have to miss for all the reasons. So we do post recordings and we also try to facilitate asking questions in advance, but that is that live time to get kicked off on the week. You know, if we're working on character this week, someone on Monday is talking about character development. And then that second thing you need to do is in blue which is, you know, the rest of it is always self-paced to fit your schedule, but then you have to upload into the system if you can each week. Um, and then the feedback happens on Monday, which is really the engine of the program. Um, and so I'm just gonna actually jump into the platform and show you one week. Um, so th this is me logged in now. The program hasn't started yet, but we already kind of get to see who our week one host is. Derek is awesome. We have his bio there um, and all the comment, all of the content is accessible here. Each week is a button and each week leads to a gallery and I'll speak to the gallery in a moment. Um, and also I'll just jump into week one. They all have the same pattern, which is we tell you what your job is up front, and we give you artifacts of what other students did. So very quickly they can get a mental model of where we're headed that week. And we have a short kickoff video, you know, two minutes to get you inspired. Um, and then the second piece is always the live stream. We're currently 13 and a half-ish days away. And it, and it will appear here and the live stream is great. We have a new system that allows people to vote, upvote questions and also chat. We try to make it as interactive as possible. And right after we post the recording of the whole thing, the, the highlights if you're short on time and office hours, which we always have to fill those missing questions, usually just three, four minutes of office hours. 
Um, and so the rest of the week, we provide optional exercises to basically help you along towards that goal. Towards the bottom of the page, we always have, again, what your deliverable is. We reiterate what it is. And I, have, I must try to move this here. We always show, again, a bunch of examples of different, uh, different levels, basically, to give you a sense of what we expect. And at the bottom of the week, at one person from every team puts in their title, description, their team name, and they upload their submission. Um, that all gets moderated by our team and then it appears over in the gallery. Um, so the gallery, the way our galleries work is kind of neat. Initially, when you arrive there, this is also a test because the program hasn't started. You're required to give feedback on three random submissions. And this is part of how our system ensures that no user in our program is ignored. Um, and so once you finish doing your required feedback, I'm going to show you what a gallery looks like. This is just from the summer session. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's just full of work. And in here, this every student's work will appear. And each one of these thumbnails takes you to a student's page where we have you provide. See, this student had a lot of feedback. Imagine waking up Monday morning to this. I mean, these aren't your parents. They're not your teachers. They're just other people who are supporting you. And this is the magic of the program. And so here we basically give you a feedback prompt. We have the same pattern we ask all students to follow. They type their feedback in, they submit it. Again, that also gets moderated as well before it appears live. But we try to do that very, very fast. Um, and so that's really how one week works. I'm just going to pop back to the dashboard here. You go through your weekly content, you go to the gallery, weekly content, gallery, that pattern repeats all the way until the final exhibition, which is kind of the, the fun public event. But I'll, I'm going to pause here because I think maybe it's a good time to, uh, to throw it over to Felissa to talk about a little bit more about the rubrics we can provide in regards to how to evaluate feedback. So I'm, I'm just going to stop here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here as well to be a part of this um, informational that's going to be happening in October. But we, um, Mr. Henderson and I wanted to put some pieces together that would help support educators. Um, you saw all the information there and the feedback, so we use standards. Um, we made sure that we looked at writing as well as the humanities and the arts so that you can use these tools to actually assess and evaluate the students. We're not using these uh, rubrics for how we're looking at um, the work. This is for, these are tools for teachers to use as they see fit aligned to their classroom and their expectations for their class. Um, again, mm -hmm. so, there's a lot of rubric, uh, there's rubrics on here and standards on here that may not, you know, you may not be concerned about whatsoever. However, if you do have things that you need to hit for your district or your particular school, your scope and sequence, we, we try to make those available right there for you to integrate. So that way, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. We used a lot of different um, common core pieces for creative writing, but the social emotional part goes more with the empathy of creating a character that your audience would really connect with. Um, I just want to give you some high level things in terms of planning. Um, in terms of like what you can see from an admin, I want to show you two things. Uh, one's kind of neat. I'm just going to stay on this page I showed you, Brandon's submission. You, um, so users have the ability to follow each other if they find a project they're inspired about and they want to kind of follow it along. But more interesting is the submission history we always give access to initially for teachers, but we realize a lot of peer to peer learning is facilitated this way. So I can see every step Brandon took to get to their story. And so I have a window into every submission in the program, every piece that person did. So it's all transparent, a lot of great data to see how, you know, how did stories change and how did people get to where they were. But at a kind of global level, I'm just going to switch now to like this account page for a teacher. What I want to point you to is this progress report. Um, this will allow you basically, you know, what you'd expect, which is an at a glance. This is, again, a test account with two people, but an at a glance look at did they log in? Did they do orientation? Did they upload, upload, upload? And you can click here to actually jump to a comment page and see all the comments of every student. So the progress report is kind of your, your dashboard. And 
we, we really tried to make it as flexible as possible for you as a core, as a classroom teacher, as a, as a social studies teacher, I found so many ways to connect with social studies, because again, uh, you're telling stories, whether it's uh, contemporary things going on and have students create on contemporary issues in their own creative ways, retelling history in their own creative ways. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you could do it in your core. The out of school space is a, a different animal. I actually love the out of school space. Um, that, you know, I love education, but I love the fact that I don't really have to worry about the standards so much and I'm not being pulled to different subject areas and we're just diving all in on this. So in the out of school space, it's putting all that, you know, we could dedicate all that time. But when it comes to incorporating it, again, it's extremely flexible. What I would recommend for the out of school space, and this is my approach to it, um, my middle school students, and we're on, I'm in Pittsburgh, you know, the nice tropical area of the country, on this side of the country, um, that 5 p.m. time is pretty late for us. So it's 9 p.m. here. I don't expect, or 8 p.m., uh, or not 8, 8, 9, but I don't expect our kids to be up at that time watching the live session. So we schedule for that Tuesday for our kids. And again, with the, now there's always a couple of kids that will still sit up and watch it on their own. I mean, you know, but I'm not going to assign that to them next time. But that Tuesday is when we will go over it in the out of school space because we're limited on time. We use the highlight, but the kids know that live session is there for their own time to go back and watch it. But in, in the class, we use that 15 minute highlight. The, the activities that go along also gives a lot more uh, guidance as they're working. So again, once you get in there, you can get creative. And then after that, that Tuesday session, they have a window. Friday is my check my check in with them again. So that Friday, we're coming back together, making sure anybody got final touches. I am available, you know, whether it's an email, something like that, and even just kind of tapping people with little messages. But again, this is my way that I implemented out of school space. In school, different animal for me when I was a classroom teacher, we're all in. That was just me. I will put stuff aside and, and just dive all in. But every teacher don't need to do that. I've seen many teachers, that, again, they might do it once or twice a week. So there's a lot of flexibility. Um, and, and really it's no one size fits all. Um, and I hope I answered your question. And woo, questions are flying in, Britt. I see some technology things, something about Chromebook. I'm gonna turn that one over to you. Oh, sure, I'll jump on that quick. Um, one thing I didn't show was we have a, a resource sheet that um, we found the community has so much good feedback on what to use that we currently have this broken down where anyone can contribute um, into tabs for video editing. And again, so your question was to a Chromebook, meaning you're, you're gonna want a browser-based video editor. So Adobe Creative Express is one of the recommendations and there's a two minute tutorial there, there we made, but there's a lot of other free options here, but um, just for the Chromebook, I think that's a nice simple one and you can be done there is you just need a simple editor and then paper and pencil you're done if you want to get into digital drawing which people sometimes do um, we have a lot of great recommendations here Krita is one people really like it's free a lot of other options and, and the same what is with I mean that's it but then when people start finishing their films they get into wanting you know they want their sound effects we have a lot of free options music free options. I, I wanted to touch, touch in on, on a couple of questions that I, including that one, but uh, I just wanted to say that for me, one thing that was really useful was that I didn't have to come up with all these answers by myself. So asking other folks was really, really useful. Students sometimes know what works for them. They're already editing stuff. They're already animating stuff it's right on their phones. So sometimes asking them what they're, what they're familiar with uh, helps a lot. Uh, for the, the CT certifications. Well, at completing this uh, eight-week course, every single student gets uh, a, a certificate directly from, uh, from, um, from, the, from the program. Uh, so that's one thing that they can add to, to all of the different pathways. And then lastly, oh yeah, now I remember. <laughs> when you were talking about how do you incorporate this program into other curriculum, well, Ask the other teachers. That's that's something that helped me a lot. What happens sometimes is you've got a week off or something happens in the classroom and you can't move forward. 
the program is super flexible in terms of being able to catch up. And so if you miss a week and you fall behind, that is absolutely okay. You can catch up the following week. You can even miss doing an assignment. The thing that's important is to try to have students upload as often as they can so that they're getting that feedback. And I don't know if anybody else wants to elaborate on that piece of it. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. I just wanted to chime in and say like that the team really means it. Like um, when Dennis was saying, you know, let us know if there's some standards that you need, like 100% the reason why I did this program the first as a pilot program was because I could literally say, hey, I need some help. And somebody on the team would be available to call me or hop on Zoom and like actually help me and actually answer my questions, which I feel like is not usually the case for for programs like this. Um, they're just so available and so helpful. And there's so many different people that wear all the different hats and have all the different experiences. So any kind of support you need, like you're not gonna struggle with getting that from the team. And I'm gonna weigh in a little bit because I think, you know, I'm coming from a place where, you know, my own background, I was an immigrant, right? I'm a first generation American, first generation college student. And the and I, I also had a chance to work at the, at the studios, right? At Disney and Warner Brothers. Everything I learned was kind of like the, I learned it the hard way. So, you know, like now I like to teach the students the easy way, but also one thing that always made a difference for me was the folks that took the time to meet with me, tell me about their experiences working in the studios. It made it real for me. And that's what this thing does. And, you know, it, to this day, we don't do this because, and I, the reason why I'm here is because I believe in the program. I've seen, you know, the, the change that it does to students. And I think the biggest change has been in the students that have the least resources. And that's tough, right? Because then like it's, you know, like, it, but, but it's possible. Like we found funding for them. But the thing is, the focus is on story. So when they hear, it's not about having the fanciest computer and the fanciest equipment. It's what you have to say. And then they start saying it and then they start getting that feedback and it just sparks something that, you know, it's going to last for the rest of their lives. I know because it happened to me and I've seen it happen to others. One of my students did a beautiful story about growing up on the autism spectrum, right? And sharing their own experiences. And everybody was so moved, including myself, we found something very insightful, the kind of stories that we don't see in Hollywood, we really need. So anyway, uh, that, uh, I don't want to take too much time, sorry. <laughs> no, that, you, you hit it on the head. And you know, again, we appreciate all of you being here because bottom line is, it is about making this accessible to everyone, no matter where they are. Um, there's, everybody has a story to tell. And for right now, and I, I'm gonna kind of give this nod to Elise and Tony. Uh, they were very upfront when we first started talking years ago, how they said, yo, working at Pixar, our kids get a chance to see things that other children cannot see. And how can we put something together that every student, every child can have access to see how Pixar works and the same opportunities to learn the same way our children learn. So we've been working hard at this, um, you know, and, and to be able to share where we are now with it, it's extremely exciting. And we are really pushing to get this in every corner as far as the opportunity for students to get engaged. So we thank you all for joining us. I just want to say one last thing, which is we are also continually improving and changing the program based on your feedback. So do not hesitate to reach out to us about anything at any point, because that's the only way it can be effective for you and for your students. And that's, that's our main goal.